I know you're asking a cosmetic question, but I wouldn't focus on the cosmetic side of it because that's only going to put you, you know, you might end up backwards. Like here you end up hurting yourself. Some of the procedures you can do with a doctor will hurt yourself. They accrue damage. You know, even the microblading, if you think about it, it must be accruing some damage to the cells. Absolutely. So instead of doing that, think of how to rejuvenate yourself in a, gen in a genuine way. And that, that way, not only will you improve your skin, but you'll improve your actual health. Hello friends, welcome to week 9's Q&A's, joined by my lovely wife Lucy. Hello. Lucy will continue asking me some of your questions from Instagram. The next one seems Italian, so I'm sorry for my Italian accent, but it's by Francesco Geninelli. <laughs> uh, he said, oh, what do you think about the red light therapy? And what do you consider the best things to do to slow down or even reverse the aging of the, the, aging of the skin? Do you think we will be able to have no wrinkles even in our 60s, for example, with the modern knowledge? Thank you, Lucy. That's a good question, Francesco. Francesco made a nice comment uh, or an interesting comment on one of the previous videos and then asked this on the Q&As, I saw the question. So Francesco, actually, just to say ahead of time, I think I'm going to write a blog post about this subject. Um, I think it could be discussed in more detail and it's quite an interesting subject. Um, I don't have all of, like, for example, I'm not off the top of my head familiar with the different wavelengths of light, like the different numbers. Mm -hmm but I've read about it quite a bit extensively before and it's worth making a blog post. So look out for that. I may make a blog post on this in the next two weeks that will be more, more detailed and have citations and stuff like that. But uh, to talk about it briefly, this is a good question. Uh, I'm gonna talk about two things. First of all, I'll talk about the infrared light and then I'll talk about uh, his actual question, which is skin reversing skin uh, aging and stuff like that. So the first thing is the infrared light is a non-trivial matter. Um, people may, might, you know, I think most people, if they heard this, they would think this thing doesn't work for sure. But if you're a woman watching this, you may know that it does. Um, basically, in the 1960s, there was a fellow, uh, maybe I'll try to find a picture of him and put it here. But there was a fellow uh, called uh, Mester. His last name was Mester. He did these studies on um, mice in which he shaved the mice he was trying to see how, uh, how quickly they will develop uh, cancer from infrared light. So he shaved the mice and he applied infrared light to them. And what happened was the mice didn't get cancer tumors, but what they did get was hair regrowth very quickly. So what happens, yeah, so the result of this was that, of course, people at that time, it was in the infancy of the uh, dealing with androgenic alopecia, male pattern baldness. And so people started using these infrared lights for male pattern baldness. Now, when I was young, I remember when I was 15 or 14 years old, we had a guy in the neighborhood who used to, <laughs> he's, he was very wealthy and he used to, uh, I, I mean, I'm mentioning he's wealthy because it's just weird for a 15 year old to do this, but he had like a huge device in his house to put laser in his head because he was going bald very quickly. Like he was like 14, 15 years old. No, maybe he was 15 or 40. Yeah, anyway, he, uh, he was very young and he was getting putting this laser on and he, he, I remember he, he was my friend's friend. I used to go to his house sometimes. I used to see that he was sitting in his room with this device on his head and I thought, these people don't know what they're doing. Why is he putting, there's no way that could grow hair. Well, it turns out it does. It works quite effectively. In fact, there's a device called the Capilus Pro. The Capilus Pro is the premier device for this. And for you guys that are interested that, that may be going bald or you might want to check this out. Capilus has a few systems but there's one called the Pro, which you need a prescription for. I think probably you need a prescription because the wavelength is a little bit more dangerous, but it does cause hair regrowth for people that have androgenic alopecia and by using infrared light. So that's how I sort of knew more about this. And then uh, I think we were living next to, Lucy and I were living next to a shop that did some kind of light therapy. And so I looked into it. Basically, this is, this is what happens. First of all, there are like two broad categories of light. There's light that is ionizing and light that is non-ionizing. Mm -hmm. Light that is ionizing, like gamma rays and x-rays, can cause significant DNA damage. Light that is non-ionizing, we would expect wouldn't, right? Uh, UV light for you guys to think of is in between ionizing and non-ionizing in, in general. 
the non-ionizing group includes things like radio waves, microwaves, and infrared light. So you, people would think that the infrared light wouldn't cause much damage. I mean, it was not shown in the uh, hair studies to cause damage to the body. Now, uh, what was shown, just to be clear, infrared light, when it is used on skin, causes collagen to uh, synthesis to increase. Okay. That leads to visual significant changes in wrinkles. It leads to, in the short term, women can, or men also, not, not just women, but by the way, women have a better response than men. Just interesting note. But um, women and men can improve their uh, skin contour. I mean, you've heard about this, uh, people that roll things on their skin with yeah. the spikes. Yeah. The, the purpose of that is sort of similar. It's to cause like minor uh, damage in the skin that causes collagen to... The Microbidding. Yes, okay. exactly. So the, the infrared works around a similar uh, way. It's a little bit different, but it causes these, these small damage that causes a synthesis of collagen in the area. The thing is, it also causes... Uh, a development of, of actual damage in the area. So UV light will cause damage in the epidermis and the dermis. Mm -hmm. The infrared light has been shown to cause damage in the dermis itself. And when we're talking about damage here, we're talking about something called MMP1. Uh, MMP1 is, I forgot the, the, the name of it exactly, uh, but MMP1 is what happens when, when uh, light damages skin. Um, when you go out in the sun, MMP1 is activated in the dermis and the epidermis. When you go and do infrared light, it only happens on the top layer of the dermis. Okay. But it still happens. Is it similar to sunburn? When you get sunburn? Yeah, uh, uh, the sunburn is an extreme version that does have that MMP1, but it has other activities as well. So basically, um, infrared light will cause your skin to look better, but it will, it will actually cause photoaging of the skin. In mm -hmm. fact, studies have shown that um, when you do infrared light, not only does it cause the activation of MMP1 in the dermis, but uh, it also causes reactive oxygen species, which is what oxidation is. When you guys think of antioxidants, it causes the reactive, we call it ROS, reactive oxygen species. ROS is found in the skin on that dermal, dermal layer at higher quantities than if not uh, done the infrared mm -hmm. light. Also, antioxidants decline in the skin because they're actually going and dealing so with basically oxidants. It's short term. Uh short-term short effect thing, but like long-term bad exactly <laughs> and 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 it's interesting because it's 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 proven in three ways the mmp1 is there which is the theoretical reason for the damaging and the, and the aging of skin and then there is the reactive oxygen species increasing and then the antioxidants decreasing now the interesting thing is this i found one study actually i found two studies uh, a while ago and so i always try to come Look, I'm not, into, I'm not into supplements, but when I study things and I find like, oh, there's a supplement that nobody came up with that could be useful. So I had this idea about, I don't know if people do, I know women probably have like uh, lotions or, or sunscreens that have vitamin C in them. Uh, and you know, you would think, I'm sure you thought this yourself, but it sounds like it's a, a scientific thing, like it, it wouldn't work. But the, the interesting thing is there's a couple of studies using infrared light that show that if you apply antioxidants to the skin, uh, and then do the infrared light. They develop less re reactive oxygen species and there's less MMP1 activity. So, uh, actually they tried a few antioxidants, which ones I just mentioned to you guys so you can know. Um, coenzyme Q10, mm -hmm. CoQ10, there's a branded version called MitoQ, M-I-T-O-Q, which you can find on Amazon. I would, if you're gonna use coenzyme Q10, I would use that one. There's tons of study, studies on MitoQ2, I mean MitoQ. It has uh, excellent effects, tons of studies, not just on this, but MitoQ2 when applied to the skin will have this effect. Uh, so will uh, EGCG and, and EC from green tea. Mm -hmm. I cannot pronounce those things. Uh, they're very difficult. Well, the EC you can pronounce, but the EGCG is nearly impossible, so I'm not gonna try, but EGCG and EC from green tea have this effect. EGCG has a particularly profound effect. And then, and both of them have strong effects. Vitamin C has a, a lower effect, about half the amount. Okay. So if you combine, and nobody's done this, but if you combine EGCG, EC, vitamin C, and MitoQ or, or coenzyme Q10, and put them on a lotion, you'll, dec you'll decrease the amount that um, the damage is occurring, the amount of activity of MMP1. If you do infrared. If you do infrared or if you go in the sun as well. Okay, so you can also work from, you should put it on your skin and before you go tanning, for the, example? Uh, well, not like, just tanning, if you go outside. Okay. That's, that's a, it's a protective measure because basically, it seems that the, what we're trying to say basically is that there's a topical effect of the antioxidant that is so strong 
that it is limiting the effect on MMP1. So it's okay. limiting the photo damage that's occurring. Now, so by the way, they also tried vitamins, vitamin E and, and another antioxidant that they didn't work. But, but vitamin C worked okay, ECGC worked very well, EC worked well, and MitoQ worked well. Now, the thing is, the question is, if you you mentioned tanning the, and infrared, the question is, if you're going to do the infrared thing, isn't the collagen th synthesis happening because of the damage? So mm. I'm not sure that it's smart to go apply this and then do the infrared because you're just, you're probably diminishing the amount that the collagen is changing anyway. And so basically you can think of infrared like tanning. It's going to make you look better in the short term and it's going to make you look worse in the long term, right? And also keep in mind that Anything like when you're experiencing this aging of the skin, you're aging your cells. You're accruing cellular damage. The sun damages us with the UV light and the infrared will also damage you to a lesser extent than the sun. So this is all damaging you. So let's get to the, to the point of his question, which is he was asking about infrared. So generally, and by the way, infrared light can also be used to uh, diminish fat cells locally. I didn't mention this though on the previous video, mainly because it's, it's damaging. Infrared light is damaging. Yeah. So, but the question he was saying is like, do you think that we can stop ourselves from aging? He's talking cosmetically in terms of our skin. And to be honest with you, you know, I'm not sure. I don't know that many methods because personally, I've never been that, that obsessed with the skin and you know, that, that kind of stuff. But I don't know that many methods that can improve skin tone without diminishing it in the long term in a significant sense. Uh, but what I do think is that the best option in this regard is to actually work on the aging process itself. Because what happens in, in life is that, you know, it's a complex process, but it seems to be basically that we have uh, con things that control our biological systems. And these things are distracted from their job when we incur damage. So when we incur damage, like from going from the UV or whatever, for example, sirtuins will move their attention to the UV damage and stop their, act, their uh, modulation of other pathways. Mm -hmm. And their modulation of other pathways, like uh, the AMP kinase pathway, are pathways that keep us rejuvenated. So when we are incurring damage, we're not rejuvenating our bodies. Now we know some tools that help us to rejuvenate our bodies, to, to get rid of damaged cells, to uh, um, fix our epigenetic code. And these are the tools that, you know, the main tools that I use in my own life, as well as I recommend to clients, which are things that affect AMP kinase, things that affect mTOR, things that affect um, IGF-1 through mTOR, uh, sirtuins, you know, these are the metformin, fasting, um, uh, you know, nicotinamide riboside potentially through NAD, uh, in increasing the NAD amount in the body. These things actually cause a rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. So you guys will notice if you look at the most well-known uh, longevity researchers that apply this stuff to themselves, they look much younger than their age. And it's not by accident. They're doing this to themselves. If you look at David Sinclair, you can search him on YouTube. You look at Walter Longo. Uh, these people do not look their age. They're much older than you would think. And they have very good skin. Yes, very good skin. They're both in their 50s. Uh, you, you look at Walter Longo, he looks like he's 31. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell. And that's, that's the reason. So uh, fasting has tremendous effects. Uh, that's what I would begin with, really. If you do a fast five days every month, you will, you will, you may potentially actually age your, go back a little bit in age. But at the very least, you'll slow down the speed at which you're accruing that genetic damage that is changing your epigenome. And what I'm talking about, and this may be a bit long-winded, but when I'm talking about changing your epigenome, what I mean to say is, so think of it this way. Every cell in your body has the same DNA. Mm -hmm. We have one master code. What differentiates your neuron cell from your skin cell, your epi epigenome. Your epigenome it's dictates being... what, is, what is being transcribed in that cell, what, is, what genes are activated in that cell. So over time in life, as you accrue DNA damage and these processes in your body, like sirtuins that are not able to properly manage, um, they're not, for, the sirtuins are going and dealing with, with, with damage that you're occurring, like uh, from stress or from the sun or from whatever, and it, or from smoking, and when they're dealing with that, they're not able to modulate the epigenetic, epigenetic code. So imagine that your heart cell is now becoming functioning a little bit like a neuron cell. 5% mm, like a neuron cell, 1% like skin cell. So these are the things that are causing damage over time. Mm. So you want to reinvigorate that 
And your skin cells are just like that also. That damage you're seeing in a person over time, which a lot of it comes from the UV damage, but it is actual damage in the cell structure in terms of the epigenome. So what I would say is, you know, I know you're asking a cosmetic question, but I wouldn't focus on the cosmetic side of it because that's only going to put you, you know, you might end up backwards. Like here you end up hurting yourself. Some of the procedures you can do with a doctor will hurt yourself. They accrue damage. You know, even the microblading, if you think about it, it must be accruing some damage to the cells. Absolutely. So instead of doing that, think of how to rejuvenate yourself in a, gen in a genuine way. And that, that way, not only will you improve your skin, but you'll improve your actual health. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for your question. We'll see you next time.